Hey, what's up, guys? Wrestling fan 0011 here to give you my TNA Against All Odds 2011 pay-per-view review. And um, sorry this took so long uh, because I just had a little more schoolwork to do. Plus, I had a little trouble finding the pay-per-view. And um, all right, so let's get to this. Um, I just got finished watching the pay-per-view, and I gotta say it was actually a pretty decent, okay pay-per-view, I guess. My prediction was right. I mean, uh, the pay-per-view was actually pretty decent, but um, wasn't really anything special. But it was okay, I guess. All right, so let's get to the let's get to this. All right, so the first match we had was actually supposed to be uh, Robbie E versus Jeremy Buck and Max Buck in a three-way match, but uh, those but Generation Me couldn't show up because they were stranded in an airport in Utah. And, well, then Robbie E won via forfeit. So then they made Kazarian um, face him for the TNA X Division title. But the thing was, Robbie E, he pulled a really long promo that cut from match time. So that was kind of disappointing. And then, sorry about that. So then they got they get to the match, and it was only about like seven to eight minutes or something like that. And it was actually not that bad. I mean, we did see a couple low-key spots. The crowd was getting really into this. And Kazarian was looking really great here, and Robbie E, he looked okay too, I guess. But then, of course, Kazarian won. So, uh, I couldn't remember how he won. If anybody can tell me how he won, just tell me in the comments below. Yeah, that'd be really helpful. Alright, so anyways, the match is okay, I guess. I'm, I'm rating it two and three quarter stars. It was just a little too short, I guess. Uh, if it went a little longer, maybe it might have reached like maybe three stars. So it was okay, I guess. All right. Then the next match was the six-man tag: Rob Terry, Gunner, and Murphy against Scott Steiner and Beer Money. And you know, surprisingly, surprisingly, this match was pretty good. I mean, I mean, okay, I wouldn't say it was actually good. I wouldn't say it was like really great. I mean, but it really did serve like what was supposed to happen. Like um, we were gonna see like Scott Steiner reintroduced into TNA again. Cause it's been like, cause like, um, I don't know, like two years since we've seen him in TNA, and of course we were gonna see a little push by the new, um, face team of Beer Money, and I mean this action, this match wasn't actually all that bad, I mean, and we didn't see any botches in this match, which was kind of surprising to me, I mean the first part of this match was a little boring, but then the final minute, the final minutes of the match actually were pretty good, so I gotta say, very good job for that TNA. So, I mean, it was pretty good. I wouldn't say it was, like, the best. But I'm gonna, I'm just going to rate this two stars. So, yeah, I mean, it was okay. It was a pretty good tag team match, I guess. Then the next match we had was Samoa Joe versus the Pope. And this was a very bad match. I mean, here's the thing. I mean, they had the most worst booking in this match I've ever seen. So here's the thing. Samoa Joe wins by making the Pope D'Angelo De Niro tap out. But then, post-match segment, um... The Pope attacks um, Samoa Joe and then bloodies him up. That is the worst thing I've ever seen. Making, um, getting Samoa Joe cut open by a guy like the Pope? Are you kidding? I mean, it would make sense if Samoa Joe would like be attacked in, like a group or something, like, uh, like maybe a mortal. But seriously, this was this did not make any sense at all. I mean, they should have just made like they should have made Samoa Joe attack the Pope. That would have been cooler. Of course, and here's the thing. I mean, Samoa Joe actually got busted open when. Uh, the Pope hit the DDE, or the De or the D'Angelo De Niro Express, as many of you may call it. And, well, then that's how he got busted open. I don't, but then I realized he got busted open because his face actually hit the exposed turnbuckle post, which really sucked. So, the match booking really sucked, by the way, and I'm just really glad Samoa Joe won the match. Because, seriously, I mean, he's lost, like, four straight pay-per-views in a row. He lost at Bound for Glory, Turning Point, and... Well, actually, it was three. Sorry, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, and and final resolution. Seriously, I'm just really glad Samoa Joe won this match. But seriously, the booking for the for this match really sucked. I'm rating this match one and a half stars. All right. Then the next match was another very terrible match. It was the last knockout standing match between Mickey James and Madison Rain for the TNA Knockouts Championship. This match I did not like at all. It was really boring. And seriously, here's the worst part of all. Once again, they made Tara interfere in this match. Seriously. We've got... This needs to end. Seriously. 
We've seen enough of Mickey James and Tara in their feud. This has to stop. And this is even the worst part. Like, here's the worst part of all. I mean, back at Genesis, Madison Rain won the match uh, by um, Tara distracting Mickey and then hitting her with a loaded glove. But this was Matt. But then the ending for this match was kind of like that. Only this time, Madison Rain used brass knuckles. Are you kidding me? <sighs> this match was terrible. I didn't like it at all. So, anyways, um, like I think maybe Mick Madison. I mean, Mickey James should get the title now. I mean, seriously. I mean, she does kind of deserve it now. She's worked so hard in TNA, but seriously, they need to make... Now I think they definitely do need to make Mickey James a champion, and fast. Madison Rain, she's not a good wrestler, and the, the match totally sucked, and we need to stop this whole feud thing with Tara. So I'm rating this match one star. It sucked. Alright. Then the next match was Rob Van Dam versus Matt Hardy, and this was actually very good. I mean, Matt Hardy, he was actually really great in this match. Seriously, I mean, he actually did drop a couple pounds, and he actually uh, was actually on fire in this match. You could have said, I mean, I think maybe Matt Hardy was better than Rob Van Dam in this match. So I'm kind of looking forward to Matt Hardy in TNA now. So um, this match was really good, I guess. I mean, I wouldn't, it was a little too long, but... I really don't care. I mean, I'm just really glad that Matt Hardy's lost a couple pounds and now he's actually in shape again. Yeah. So, well, anyways, um, then Rob Van Dam hit the five-star frog splash and he won the match. So, I mean...